The Armenian Genocide. Why did it happen? How did it happen? Who were the Ottoman Turks? And what were the implications on the Armenian people? These are a few of the questions that I'll be answering through this video. I am Armen Zeychan, and yes, you've guessed correctly, I am Armenian. The Armenian Genocide has affected my family's life, my ancestors' lives, and moreover, the lives of the entire Armenian population. It marks a turning point, a tragic turning point, in my people's history, and what is often neglected is that even prior to the genocide, within the Ottoman Empire, Armenians endured severe oppression due to the hegemonic beliefs and structures that were put in place by the Ottomans. And so, the hundreds of years of oppression are what culminated into the Ottoman Turks' decision to exterminate the Armenian people. However, the pressing question is, why? To understand what happened and why, you have to go back, way back, 3,000 years ago, when this part of the world was still called Eurasia. The Armenian people living there had created an independent kingdom, and they were the first nation to make Christianity the official religion. But during the 15th century, the predominantly Muslim Ottoman Empire absorbed Armenia. The Ottomans considered their Armenians second-class citizens, but they were able to peacefully coexist, for the most part, and developed a vibrant cultural identity. But at the dawn of the 20th century, the Ottoman Empire started to crumble as some territories pulled away and established their own nations. In 1908, a movement known as the Young Turks seized power and wanted to Turkify the region and give it a unified national identity. They viewed non-Turks, particularly Christians, as a big threat and feared that as World War I was brewing, Armenia might join forces with Russia, which was mostly Christian at the time. So on April 24th, 1915, the Young Turks began to arrest and execute Armenian intellectuals and community leaders. For the next several years, Armenians were starved, raped, murdered, and deported from their homeland. In total, an estimated 1.5 million of them were massacred. Turkey, 
Pope Francis recently called it the first genocide of the 20th century. Talking about the Armenian Genocide, it's often called the Hidden Holocaust or the Forgotten Genocide. But this year, as Armenians mark 100 years since the atrocities committed against them, they're doing all they can to make sure you know about it. More than 20 nations recognize what happened to the Armenians as genocide, but not the United States, partially because it would massively tick off Turkey, an important ally in the region. Armenians were encouraged when then-Senator Barack Obama called it a genocide on the campaign trail. There was a, uh, a genocide that did take place uh, uh, against the Armenian people. But he hasn't uttered the word since. Four members of Congress have called for the federal government to finally and officially declare it a genocide. So that we can end the denial once and for all. And leaders in Europe have urged Turkey to come to terms with its past. Welcome back. As seen through this video segment, even till today, the Turkish government denies ever having committed the Armenian genocide. And moreover, pressures other countries to do the same. Evidence of this pressure can be seen earlier in the video. For example, this year, in commemoration of the centennial, the Pope acknowledged the Armenian Genocide. And according to BBC News, Turkey's foreign ministry in response said it felt great disappointment and sadness at the Pope's remarks, which it said would cause a problem of trust between them. I would like to conclude by saying that this video primarily focuses on how the genocide impacted Armenians. But it is also important to realize that even prior to 1915, under Ottoman rule, Armenians were denied civil liberties and even had to pay more taxes. Why? All because they were Christian and were therefore seen as inferior citizens. I am Armen Zeychan, and I speak for the entire Armenian population when I say, I have been a victim of hegemonic oppression.